I don't know what that is. <laughs> Go. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Say good morning. The basement's too dark, so I put out some blankets so we can watch a little morning show while I have my coffee together. I don't want to... Nala! I don't want to be in the basement by myself. Gio's at work. And I'm not ready to work yet, so I plugged in the TV upstairs and threw some blankets down. Good morning. What's going on, sister? The pretty girl. What a pretty girl. You want to have some breakfast? Do you want food? Yeah, do you want some food? Good morning. Good morning. She's a little spooky right now because we have, as you can see, we have someone here, that van, looking at, um, sorry, all of the windows. I don't know where he's, he's at, but we have someone here looking at the windows, so she's spooky. And I've had to move my, look at that cactus, my pride and joy. I had to move it in this room because over there by the front entrance, it wasn't getting a lot of light. So now hopefully it doesn't die over the winter time. Nala, are you okay? He's just here to look at the windows. Nothing bad's gonna happen, okay? She like can't relax because he's right outside this window over here. <laughs> I don't know if you guys will be able to tell. But there is a hawk perched up right there, swooping down, trying to get what I would assume is any field mice that are still alive in this cold weather but Zeus all morning has been just triggered by this hawk all morning he's trying to get him it has been a busy morning so far I thought that the painters were going to come back to the house today, but then when I asked you about it, I remembered when we originally hired them, they were going to start right away. And then this week they had a project that they already committed to, and then they were going to come back like next week to finish the rest of the painting in the house. So with that being said, I was like, well, then we're not going to hang out in the basement and we're not going to lay on blankets on the floor for, you know, this whole entire week. So I've already gone downstairs and brought up two little pieces of our sectional couch so we have somewhere to sit that's what I'm sitting on right now and then I brought up my little papasan chair and my TV we're not big gamers but a couple months ago I found my old Wii console from 2009 and it still had the Mario Brothers game in it so for like months I have been playing Mario Brothers at the end of the night and it's just a fun way to relax but yeah the place looks a little different now so I'll show you not a big change, but we have two little pieces of our couch. Sebastian already got his clothes changed. Good morning. I love you. Hello. And then this is like my area. This is actually the dining room, so this is not going to stay here. But for now, um, I have my little chair. And as you can see, I have my Wii all set up for later so I can play some Mario Brothers. The house is just so dirty. Look at Nala's floor over here. This, <laughs> she was on carpet before, so I have a feeling all this mess was always in the carpet. I just never saw it. I mean, you know me with my vacuum lines. I, car I vacuumed every single night, but now that we have hardwood floors, oh my goodness. I need to, this is our new dishes. Look at these floors. But it doesn't make sense to clean anything because next week is going to be all dusty in here. Our goal for today we have to go to Gio's grandma's house again. Look at all this laundry already. I don't know how Gio and Sebastian go through so much laundry. I really don't. But yeah. Hey, hello. The place feels just a little bit more homey with a little sectional and the throw blanket. <laughs> the hawk is gone. And all is well. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. You like your new bed? You like your new bed in a new house in a new bed? Good morning, good morning. Oh, you're going on, I? Oh, no, 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 no.
love you <laughs> love you hi sweetheart we got to do your medicine how do you feel about that only two more days after today and then no more medicine yay sebastian has a nurse coming out to the house around two o'clock today to do a blood draw and a dressing change and then i think after that is when we're gonna head to geo's grandma's house because she's about i would say like 20 25 minutes from us and we have two loads of laundry and her laundry or washer and dryer is like a little bit old school so it takes like the full hour so to wash and dry so that's like four hours we're gonna be there so i just don't want to go there this morning and then rush and try to get home for the nurse so we're gonna wait around i'm gonna do his meds right now um and then we're gonna wait for the nurse and then we're gonna go do laundry but i was able to touch base with the infectious disease doctor from the hospital and i have wonderful news sebastian is able to keep his pick line in until surgery so that is a blessing anytime when sebastian goes into the hospital he can get poked one less time with a needle makes my mom heart very, very happy. So it stinks that he has to has, have this line in still, even though his antibiotics are gonna be done, just cause it's a pain in the butt. And he can't like be fully submerged into water and he loves taking baths. So that part kind of stinks, but it is so wonderful that he's gonna be able to keep that line in until surgery. Because when we get there in two and a half, three weeks, it's just gonna be one less painful thing that he has to go through. Like the line is already in and we can avoid a needle prick so I am very very happy about that and speaking of heart surgery we actually have a meeting with his surgeon this Friday so we are going to meet with him and he's going to discuss the surgery what type of surgery he's gonna do basically there's two different corrections that they could choose to do and I'm not sure which one they're going to do. That That's what we're going to find out on Friday. He's going to kind of look at the anatomy of his heart and what Sebastian needs and then explain to us what to expect in the surgery, how long the surgery should, could take, and then I assume how long we could possibly be in the hospital. All of those things, timelines are never guaranteed. They could say, oh, the surgery is going to take this many hours and it could take double. You know, it just kind of depends on what happens when they get into the OR. And the same thing with recovery. Some kids go home within a week. Some kids, like Sebastian, tend to stay for a couple of weeks. But we are going to have more information on his heart on Friday. So that's kind of good, too. Just knowledge is power. And I feel so much more content having the most information as possible. So lots of things coming up this week. But I'm excited. Only two more days on the antibiotics. And then we kind of get a break from that. We're just going to be flushing with saline and heparin to keep the line good. But it's nice to have just that extra step like, okay, I don't have to worry about the antibiotic thing anymore. So that's that's really good. Moving on, it's time for medicine. You gonna cover up your face? You don't want me to see you? Hey. Hey. What are you doing? Tell me. We gotta do your medicines, okay? Is that okay? <laughs> You're so beautiful. You know that? What, are you gonna hide again? You playing peekaboo? Peekaboo, mama still sees you. <laughs> if you are new here, and this happens to be the first video you are seeing of ours, because that happens all the time. This is Sebastian, he's five years old. He was in the hospital, well, I guess it's been about a month now. A month ago he was very sick and he was very tired and we thought it was just because he needs heart surgery at the end of this year however we discovered that he had an infection in his heart called endocarditis that's what just the term when you have an infection in your heart it's called endocarditis he got a variant of strep just like strep throat he caught a variant of strep a bacterial infection that got into his bloodstream and it made a cozy little home on his heart, which is already a sick heart. He already has a history of congenital heart disease. He's had three open heart surgeries. His fourth open heart surgery is going to be December 1st of this year. So what I'm doing here is just an antibiotic treatment at home to treat the infection in his heart. It should be hopefully almost gone by now because he only has two days left of the antibiotic. 
And if you are wondering why there are so many boxes and stuff, it's because we just moved in. So just in case you're new, that's what's going on. Everybody else who's already been here for months and months and months, hello. Some people even for years. Well, yeah, this is what his antibiotic looks like. It takes about a half hour to completely infuse into his arm. And that's it. You did very good today. No grinding your teeth. Well done. Yeah, no grinding your teeth. Good job. While Sebastian's fusion goes in, again, it takes a half hour. I wanted to take a minute to highlight one of our viewer questions. I feel like, again, that's why I just spoke the way I did in, in the previous clip. There are still constantly new people watching our videos all the time. And sometimes they'll come in on a random video and they know nothing about us. And so there's lots of questions that people have. And it's hard sometimes to catch those questions if you see there's hundreds and hundreds of comments on each of my videos. So I don't always catch them. And it's not their fault because, you know, if our video pops up in their feed, they see it, they click on it, they want to know what's up, they have questions. So it happens all the time. This specific question was very long, but it was asked very respectfully. So I'm going to post a screenshot of the question and then I would also just like to answer it myself on video just in case anybody else here is new or if that person missed my reply. Um, I think it's good information for everybody to have about Sebastian. If you didn't take the time to read all that, that's okay. It was a pretty long question. But basically what the viewer is asking or what she's curious about is Sebastian's brain and how it works. She said that she notices sometimes Sebastian seems to be very aware of his surroundings. He knows what should and shouldn't be for him. For example, she said, you know, he's five years old and he is irritated by his high chair. Do you think that he feels that way because a typical five-year-old probably wouldn't be in a high chair as well as the nap thing? Five-year-olds, I usually typically aren't on like a scheduled nap schedule anymore. Maybe if they go to kindergarten, there's like a nap time. But you know, when you have a baby through like two or three years old, they're typically on a nap schedule. And then once they hit like three and a half, four, five, definitely six, they don't want to nap anymore. So she was wondering if Sebastian's not napping and if he's irritated in his chair because he knows that he shouldn't be doing those things, but his brain doesn't let him communicate that. That was very, very observant of her and she is spot on. Sebastian is very, very aware of his surroundings. Even though he cannot communicate with words, it doesn't mean that he doesn't know how to communicate. And I do believe that the reason why he's not napping anymore is because he is five years old. He's five, he's a big boy in a small body, but he's a big boy and he doesn't want to nap. He just doesn't want to. It could be because we moved and he's in a new, new place and he's in like a dark, cold basement. I, would, I don't want to nap in there either. I tried to, like I said in my last video, I tried to nap him up here, but it's bright. He's used to his dark room. It could be because of the surrounding change. It could be because he's five years old and he knows knows that I'm a big kid. I don't need naps anymore, mom. As far as the high chair thing, Sebastian, when he was younger, he really hated being in his car seat. He doesn't like to be confined. His body is already pretty stiff. So when he's kind of like strapped down, it irritates him just like any typical toddler. They usually sometimes put up a fight getting in their car seat. They don't like to be strapped down, right? Same thing with his high chair. Sebastian, that chair benefits him a lot. I keep looking at it because it's right to my left. That chair benefits him a lot. The posture is at a very good posture, whereas in his chair he sits at, he's kind of like relaxed in there. It's better for him to be sitting up straight. But with that comes a little bit of stress on his body. His muscles, his joints are very, very tight. It's a characteristic, a physical characteristic of his syndrome. His syndrome affects the way that his joints are able to open and flex and move. So being in that high chair, forced to sit up straight, to open up his hips, to straighten his back and to sit up and hold his neck, it's a little stressful on him. So I don't necessarily think that he's mad about being in the high chair because he's five years old, but cognitively he can't communicate that he's a five-year-old and he doesn't need to be in a high chair. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's more so how it kind of stresses his body and it's just, it's a little extra work for him to sit up straight. So I think that's what the high chair thing is about, but we're just gonna keep putting him in there and he'll, he'll get used to it. Just like anything else, he just needs a little bit of time to figure it out and he's like, okay. So the high chair thing, it's, it's, it's good for him. So we're gonna continue to encourage him to get comfortable in that chair.
The science behind Sebastian's brain is he, in addition to all of the heart stuff and the syndrome that he has, he was also born with encephalopathy. It is a brain disease. His specific brain disease affects the frontal lobe of his brain. It's his decision-making center of his brain. So Sebastian, he knows what's going on, but his brain doesn't have the ability sometimes to communicate that, to relay information, if that makes sense. It's the same thing with his vision and his hearing. Sebastian can see and Sebastian can hear, but because of the way his brain disease affects his processing, it's almost like what he's hearing takes a minute to get there and it takes a minute for his brain to process what he's hearing. So sometimes it takes him a minute to respond. Other times he responds right away. It's the same thing with his vision. Sebastian most likely has decent vision. However, his brain doesn't know how to communicate to him what he's seeing. So the picture is there, but it's most likely not clear, if that makes sense. And that is just how his brain works. It's how it has always worked and how it will always work. It's kind of like the surgeons just explained it to us as easily as they could that sometimes the brain waves are really smooth and they're communicating really well and sometimes they're kind of all over the place and that's where those like miscommunications come from where sometimes when i talk to him there's a direct response he's intentionally responding intentionally communicating you can tell that he's in there and other times it kind of takes a minute you'll see him if i say something he'll like pause and then he'll laugh about it it's just how his brain processes information so i'm really thankful to that person who commented it was very she was very curious but she was very respectful and as i've always said i'm an open book nala i'm an open book so if you have a question and you're able to ask me respectfully i don't mind answering it okay all right mama enough medical talk enough medical talk nala is on another level these days she's in that big room and all it does is echo all day long. So she just loves to hear herself talk. Now, can you straighten your arm a little bit? You see how hard it is to pull his arm back? That again is just another part of his syndrome. He's got really stiff joints. Blush with a little bit of heparin. And then we're gonna put on another one of these caps. And even though I didn't do an antibiotic in the other line, I'm still gonna flush it just to keep it nice and nice and healthy. Hey, why are you grinding your teeth this time? Huh? Why are you grinding your teeth this time? That's a ucky sound. Ucky, 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 ucky. All right, almost done, almost done, one more. I'm trying to talk and keep some sound in the background so you guys don't have to listen to that awful grinding sound. Sorry, but this is all done. Good job, honey pie. You did so good. I love you. Well, I think I'm gonna cut it there. We, at this point, we're just waiting for the nurse to get here and then we have to go over to Gio's grandma's house to do our laundry. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to clean our floors. I think that's what I'm gonna do because it's giving me a little bit of anxiety with all this dirt on the floor. Dust and food and feathers. <laughs> you're so quiet when you're on camera, aren't you? Say something. Yeah, the spotlight's all yours, come on. What are you gonna say? Nothing, huh? Much better. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us this morning. And if I'm up to it, maybe I'll record a little bit later and post something later tonight. But if not, we'll definitely see you tomorrow. Thank you all again for being here so much. Thank you for asking questions respectfully. I encourage you to. I want you to know what you wanna know, so ask me. See you later, beautiful people. <laughs>